What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the 22 biggest things that were added to Madden 22. As most of you know, year to year, sometimes the game does not change very much. But this year, this is the most they've changed from one Madden to the next and probably the last decade. So we're going to go over the 22 biggest changes or additions to the game. If you're new to the channel and don't want to miss out on any future Madden 22 uploads or the exclusive gameplay I'll have any day now, make sure to subscribe, turn the bell icon on so you don't miss those videos. But let's get right into it. Number one on the list is the addition to coaching staff and franchise mode, a feature that was removed a long time ago and has been asked about ever since. Now you can hire offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, and a player personnel department. You can also fire them, and other teams can hire these guys away from you as well. Not only do you have a full coaching staff, but you also have skill trees that come with these coaching staff so that you can upgrade them throughout playing your franchise. These skills can help upgrade players faster, scout players easier, trade for players easier, re-sign players easier, and everything in between. Not only does this come with a bunch of skill trees to start, but they're going to be adding more and more throughout the year so that the list keeps growing. Number two on the list is an overhauled scouting system in franchise mode. No longer will it be the old boring system of just literally hitting three buttons on a player a few times a week and finding out everything you need to know about them. They're going to be implementing a new scouting system that is coming shortly after release. It's scheduled for September, so a few weeks after the game releases, there will be a new scouting update for franchise mode where now you can hire regional and national scouts. You can send them to certain areas. They all have their own expertise. And now you will find out more about players than ever before. Gone are the old days of scouting that didn't mean anything. Now introducing something that actually has depth and actually can help you find the perfect players in your draft. Number three on the list is the season engine, which is an upgraded version of the scenario engine. Now let's be honest, the scenario engine was pretty bad. It wasn't really much to it, but this year they have upgraded it. They've added cinematics and cutscenes. They've added way better scenarios that actually affect your team and it's just basically what the system should have been in the first place when they introduced it in Madden 20. You'll be in the GM's office, the coach's office, in the locker room with players. You'll be doing press conferences and you'll have certain things that you'll have to answer, certain decisions you have to make and this will affect your franchise and you'll get to see it unfold in real time. Number four on the list is a game planning overhaul inside a franchise mode. Gone are the old days of not really having much to do with game planning, just kind of having guys do their weekly drills and that's it. Now you have a bunch of information surfaced to you, especially on the next gen version where they've integrated next gen stats into this. Now you can see literally everything your opponent is doing. And as the year goes on and teams start to kind of change how they play in real life, the next gen stat data can be updated if you're starting new franchises in the game. But once you're into a franchise, it'll take a life of its own and you'll get the breakdown of what each team are doing. You can focus on certain players and try to take them away and that'll give you certain boosts for the game depending on what you're game planning for. Number five on the list is a new fatigue system for franchise mode. A long requested feature finally makes its arrival this year where you can manage your player health throughout the season. You can decide if you want your starters going full pads or half pads, if you want them splitting reps with the backups and to what degree. Now, the harder you push your players, the more XP they'll unlock. However, they'll have a higher chance of injury. Whereas if you let them take it a little bit easier, you'll get less XP, but you also have a much less likely chance of them getting injured. And this is going to become crucial later in the season as your overall team fatigue is going to naturally go down as the season wears on. So you're going to have to be very careful how hard you're pushing these players if you want them to be ready down the grueling end of the season where they really have to lock in and make those pushes for the playoffs or actually compete in the postseason. Number six on the list is a brand new momentum system added to the game now this is a next gen exclusive feature this will not be on the older consoles but there is a new momentum system added to the game and both teams have the advantage of momentum in any given game depending on what's happening in the game momentum could swing in their favor and once momentum swings in their favor they will unlock certain abilities as a team that can help take over the game for example once momentum swings in a team's favor the opposing team's quarterback could be a little bit more rattled and he might not see his open receivers as easily as before. Number seven on the list is home field advantage. This is also a next gen exclusive feature similar to what we saw in the old NCAA games, but they've added much more on top of this. So in certain stadiums like the Seahawks, for example, when they have home field advantage in their favor, you'll see the squiggly lines on the field and it'll be harder for the offense to read the play. You'll remember that from the old NCAA games, but they've added a lot more on top of this. For example, when you play in Denver because of the altitude, the away team will fatigue faster. 
Or when you play in Miami, the away team fatigues faster because they sit in the blazing Miami sun, whereas the home team sits in the shaded side of the stadium. Number eight on the list is Star Driven AI, and this is another next-gen exclusive change. This basically just means the players and the CPU will play more like their real-life selves. They're taking the next-gen stats data and incorporating it into the teams. This will be bigger for franchise mode players as most of them are playing more times than not versus the computer. So now when you play the Ravens, they'll be a much more pistol heavy team they'll run the ball more you'll see them go to the play calls they go to in real life and not do things that are out of character whereas the bills a super pass heavy team is going to be in shotgun and slinging the ball a lot more often number nine on the list is team play has returned to the game and i don't mean the team play inside of ultimate team that's been there for a few years i mean regular team play where you can take the packers versus the 49ers and you can have three of your friends versus three other guys and one guy can be the qb one guy can be the wide receiver one guy could be the running back or whoever you want to control you can now do two on two or three on three with regular teams in the game inside the superstar ko mode something that has been long requested is finally back Number 10 on the list is a new face of the franchise story. The mode is still here. They've updated the story. It's a much more path to the draft type story. They've done away with the over the top made for the TV movie cinematic weird story that nobody liked. They kind of went back to the basics. It's more so just about a top prospect trying to see how high he can get drafted going through the motions of getting drafted. And it looks like a much welcome change versus what we've been having for the past two years that most people didn't really care for. Number 11 on the list is the addition of a deep defensive player inside a face of the franchise in the past couple of years you could only control offensive players they have finally added a defensive position which is linebacker I would like to see them unlock all positions I'm not really sure why that has not happened yet but for the first time since face of the franchise has made its way to the game you can be on the defensive side of the ball you don't have to strictly play offense number 12 on the list is the new class progression system this is big for your face of the franchise but also your player inside of the yard the custom player that you create there's new classes and archetypes for each position and the way they upgrade is a little bit different than in years past but the biggest thing here is the progression is shared between face of the franchise and the yard so if you do like to play both modes you don't have to have two completely separate players that you need to upgrade separately where you upgrade one he'll have those same upgrades when you jump to the other mode and they've unlocked a ton of new archetypes and classes that go with each specific player type so you can build a more custom player than you could in years past number 13 they've added 300 new plays slash formations to the game now not 300 formations they've probably only added a few formations from what i've seen but there's 300 new plays at launch which is a decent amount especially seeing as last year there were very few new plays and formations at launch we've already seen a ton of them in the beta when that was out for the game there's a lot of cool new formations especially in shotgun there's a ton of new plays to play around with and for a game like madden you're constantly wanting to use new plays or use the plays that you're seeing teams use in real life so it's a much needed update to add more variety to the play calling in madden number 14 on the list are new draft class generators for franchise mode if you're a franchise mode player you may remember that when you would have these custom draft classes a lot of times you would get a lot of the same names a lot of the same faces but most importantly you wouldn't really get a lot of superstar or x-factor players even in the top of the draft well they've redone this they've added 100 new faces to the game they've added a ton of new names to the game but also you're going to generate more top end players in the draft you're going to get more superstar and x factor players especially earlier in the drafts than you have in the past it was a much needed tweak so now when you're going through those motions of trying to add new talent to your team there's going to be much more superstar like players for you to attain in the NFL draft going forward. 15 are new tackle animations, an area of the game that constantly needs improving. More animations than we had in the past is always a good thing. I know physics is a place that a lot of people want to see the game go, but you still need animations to a certain degree in the game, and a lot of them have gotten stale and repetitive. Well, they've definitely redone tackle animations. They used the same ones that were always there. They kind of made them a little better. They refreshed them, but they definitely added some much needed new ones. So while you'll still see the same tackle animation playing out, maybe more than you would like, you're going to see a little bit more variety than in the years past. Number 16 is halftime adjustments, a feature that was added to Madden 22 where you can now adjust at halftime just like real NFL teams. You can do this in online play and in franchise mode. So remember earlier when we talked about the game planning and how you could focus on certain players or certain uh, parts of a team going into a game and you would get certain boosts. Well, when you go into that game, let's say that it's not working out at halftime, you can readjust and tell them, hey, instead of focusing on the deep pass, let's focus on the intermediate pass because that's where they're really beating us 
this up and now it'll change your boost for the second half of the game because you've made the adjustment but your opponent can also do the same thing so keep that in mind number 17 on the list is live events now this is going to be something that's bigger for the mode like the yard they're adding new live events where they could be limited time events where you can go in earn maybe special gear unlock stadiums earn things for your player this is big in a lot of other sports games it's an area that madden is still kind of behind in outside of ultimate team but they're definitely bringing this to modes like the yard now where there will be limited time events where you can unlock some cool stuff Number 18 is a new yard campaign mode. They've updated this. They've made it a little bit better. They've also added a leaderboard for the yard as well. So the yard's getting a little bit of a facelift, but there's a whole new campaign mode with new places to play, new things to earn, and different things to upgrade with your character than there were in Madden 21. Number 19 on the list is the addition of super fans in every single NFL stadium. This kind of goes a little bit along with the home field advantage stuff on next gen, but also the fact that they've just kind of redone a lot of the game day stuff. They've made the crowd come more alive the sidelines better and things like that but part of the crowd becoming better more alive is the addition of having a super fan in every NFL stadium which will stand out especially when the home field advantage is going crazy number 20 on the list is a brand new Super Bowl presentation I believe this is for franchise mode but also for ultimate team because you do get the Super Bowl cut scenes and stuff like that when you win an ultimate team Super Bowl but I know it's more so targeted for the franchise crowd as the Super Bowl presentation celebration had been the same for like the last five Madden so it was a much needed overhaul that has been done for Madden 22 number 21 is stat tracking on your players inside of ultimate team a long requested feature is finally here you can track the stats on every single player card that you have in the game you can track your personal stats but you can also track the all-time stats on that card if that card had been passed around between multiple users it's also going to have the addition of next gen stats as well on the card so you'll see the longest air yardage with a player or the fastest mile per hour that that player is running everything like that a much needed upgrade to mutt that people have been asking for and number 22 the last thing is you now have the ability to change your abilities during halftime and ultimate team i believe this will go hand in hand with the halftime adjustments feature but now you can decide to call that audible at halftime if the abilities you have are not working or if the players who are active are not working depending on who's in your lineup you can swap out players or abilities to try to help counter what your opponent's doing so this could add a whole nother layer of strategy to the game inside of ultimate team I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.